All right, so this is the cycling shorts here. When should you replace them? Uh, these are my, I've got some new cycling shorts coming uh, for order as well. Had these for a couple years, and you can see I wear my stuff out until it's done. You can sort of see that now it's getting pretty worn through, pretty see-through, sort of Mardi Gras material. And then when you have those two fingers, that's when I, you know, and the, so this is, this is from Nimbleware in China. And they've been, they've, been, they've been pretty good. The stitching, I could get that fixed up if I wanted to. But the chamois is pretty cooked. And it's starting to give me chafing on longer rides. So for short rides, it's all right. But this is when I, you know, the chamois split. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but there's chamois juice in there. Talks to you. Hey, what's up? Good looking. And uh, there you go. So that's when the pad is worn. But it's still got, you know, it's all right. I just did a 1200k stage race here in Thailand. I use these nicks. But that little bit of rough edges has chafed the gooch has given a bit of gooch chafing there but otherwise it's been all right so these will hit the uh you know these will hit the bin at some point hit landfill unfortunately but uh i'll use them as a rag before then but they've been pretty good otherwise we can sort of see i've you know i've used them well they've had really good usage really good usage, quite faded you can see that's the original color versus the outside so yeah that's when i used to replace my nicks i like to wear stuff out and that's my cycling experience is based on using products for you know thousands of kilometers, hundreds of thousands of kilometers over the years, for over 400,000 Ks as a vegan, just using all sorts of product material and asking other riders about their experience with certain products. And, and that's where, you know, that's how it's giving me the experience level I've got. But that's when I replace my nicks there. So if you've got any questions, I'm mean, doing this as a live stream right now as well. Hit me up with some questions down below. And we've got the Velta. Um, that's right, Tori. Tori's in the live stream saying people would have seen your ass the whole race. But I was generally sitting on the back of the pack. <laughs> the the see-through look is personal preference. It's a personal preference. So there we go. I'll, um, let me just put a little, uh, let me just put a little tripod on here. And I'll do a little live stream with this. We just all have a cycle in Manila. Yeah, I cycled in Manila. Manila's pretty good. Oh, I just had a little nap. Oh yeah, my lover over there. Um, there we go. Oh, cool. Hungover for stage race. Um, all right, give me some questions here. Give me some questions. <laughs> Not that question. Um, catch the bus home tomorrow, please. I think I will. My hands are my. Like, this is just like my pads. See those pads? They're pretty cool. It's almost like a massive blister about the fucking launch up through there. But uh, I think I'll jump on the bus tomorrow back on home. Good hands. This is doing good hands. I would have done that anyway, Tori. Just for you. Um, but the, the Tour of Spain's going on. Chris Froome's in the red jersey. It's been interesting. Uh, like Chris Froome will win, like I said. But Nabali did a good, strong ride uh, today. Or yesterday's stage. I think it's stage 17. The barley's getting up there, but it's only a minute. I think it's only a minute seventeen separates Froom from the barley. A minute seventeen. That's that's not much time at all. That's hey, that's a that's like a flat tire. You know, it's just that's like fuck. It's a minute seventeen is not much at all. Not much at all. You know, not much at all. Um, so how did I finish in this race? I finished ninth overall, and the race is finished now. Today was the last stage, stage seven. I kept my ninth placing. So yeah. I'm a ninth overall, I'll probably get about 800 bucks maybe for that. Uh, Garmin Vector 3 pedals. I'm not a fan of the Garmin products. Um, I think the customer service you know, in Australia, in my experience, is extremely poor. You know, it's hit and miss, it's 50-50. They'll look after you, they'll tell you the fuck off essentially. So I can't really recommend Garmin product anymore. But uh, what else have we got over here? Oh, we'll do a bit of the lighting. I can't really rate them that much but if you've got them and you like them that's the main thing that's the main thing so I think the stages for me stages power meter is the best I mean someone the other day had a problem with their stages power meter at one of the races and then come up and ask me about it because he knows I, I rate their product and I just said take your battery out let it dry overnight recalibrate in the morning see how you go and he did that back to normal and I said do that every night it rains just let it dry out um, so yeah there we go uh, next question is I'm just looking through here. 
I've just got a stage that seems great so far. It is. If you have any issues with stages, just t take the uh, battery out and put it back in. Let it dry overnight if it gets wet. Um, thoughts on the Defy Advance 2018 looks good. Depends what well, depends what sort of writing you want to do. Depends what sort of writing you want to do. How do I like my Brighton? I, I like my Brighton very much. It's been fantastic. 36 hour battery life, it's just killer. It's just killer. Um, it's killer. Do you have any plans to meet up with cycling maybe and do some adventures or are we too different? Um, well, we're both bike riders, so there's a lot of common, a lot in common there. So um, who knows what will happen in the future if we do any rides together or, or whatever. We have done some just little small rides, but uh, see what maybe IndyPat next year. I'm not sure if, if Mark will line up for that, but we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Um, oh man, that was a good, having a good nap. It's amazing how your face changes when you have a little sleep and then wake up. It's quite interesting, isn't it? Your face never changes size. Uh, can you ride cyclocross bikes? For sure, man. I was I rode mountain bike cranks this last seven days on a road bike. So why can't you put 28 mil slicks on a road bike? It depends who you're riding with as well. You know, it depends who you're riding with as well, and depends on how what sort of riding it's done. So I mean, today I was struggling on the flat. I struggled on the flat today. I was, sometimes I was doing a 400 watts at 130 cadence when there was an acceleration on the front. So. Yeah, it depends what sort of riding is going on. You know, if it, is it like a lot of surging or is it just pretty smooth speed? Depends on stuff like that, but for sure, man, cyclocross bike and a fast ride, you can do that. I mean, I ride a cyclocross bike on any fast bunch ride. It doesn't It's not going to hold you back much at all. For it to hold you back, then it must be a pretty fucking elite group. It must be a pretty elite group, or you just need to get fitter. You just need to get fitter. Oh, I bet you... Oh, what else was I going to say? Yeah, it was crazy, this race. It was, like, really well organised. So many epic climbs, man. It was, like, oh, my God. It's just, the, oh, man. Some serious mountains in Thailand, man. Some, and some serious little steep hills that come out of nowhere. You're riding along and then just, bam, this wall comes from nowhere. It's like it's, it's, like it's camouflaged in the terrain. So it's very uh, interesting. <laughs> it's very interesting. It's, like... Yeah, Thailand's a pretty amazing place, man. Look, I look, I got my bike downstairs, just left it there. I don't even know what Brighton is, I think it's on my handlebars or something, but people don't steal stuff, you know, it's like, you get pretty, like, what's not, not lazy or complacent, you just get very trusting here, I leave my Oakleys around, I leave my wallet around, I leave my mobile phone around, it's, um, it's crazy. Was it GPS tracked like Indy Pack? No, it wasn't, it was more of a, a road race. So we had timing chips, and you had, had to uh, show your GPS stuff end of the day a lot of your garments and stuff at first checkpoints so no one's going to cheat so yeah have a bit to the UK I've been to the UK yes 2001 2003 I used to live there a bit um, from struggling yesterday yeah, I'm not sure like this if he's struggling <laughs> he did a really good time trial do you tend to get sore the days after a race like this or will you be back tomorrow I'm fine but the hardest part is his hands so his pads here that's the hardest part of this whole race for me you know Got to be chafing on the on the gooch, but the hands, man. I've never really had this before. This is weird for me. I think because I've just done so many Ks in the last seven days compared to I've done that. I haven't done, done that many Ks for like that for probably four years, man. 2014 was the last time I did 12 and a K week. So I've just just randomly just pumped up the Ks, and my body's like, whoa, 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 what are you doing? What are you doing? Um, will I do a review on the new giant bikes? Uh, I can do that. Can do that. What new bikes have they got? What new bikes have they got? Will Big T beat Froome next year? Chris Froome's unbeatable, man. When Chris Froome wants to win a race, no one's coming close. Simple as that. You know, no one's coming close to Froome when he wants to, when he wants to win the race. He'll win it. You know? And so, no one's going to beat him until he's ready to retire. Simple as that. He's like Lance Armstrong, just unbeatable, man. When he wants to win, when he really wants to win. Not when he just turns up to a race because he got paid or because he's like, oh, I might do this. No, when he wants to win, man, he'll win it. What's the total elevation gain for this race? I think it's about 17 or 18,000 metres elevation. So almost, or well, pretty much two Everests, two Everestings in a week at race pace. <laughs> Joyous. That was good fun. It was really good training. It was good training. I can feel my, wow, I've lost fat off my bum. I can feel the bones on the floor now. I have to go and eat some fatty vegan food to restock. When are we going to make a hydroponic garden? 
hydroponic bicycle maybe maybe I'll do that um, well I'm going to go and get some food we've got presentations soon uh, maybe I'll do another live stream doing the presentations or something like that thanks for all the questions gang but that's when I'll replace my cycling mix when they're like when basically when you can you know when it's really see through at the back and there's a hole there that's when I replace my nicks and then the pads gooched out when you replace your nicks um, would love to see how far in 24 hours I've done that 594 k's in 24 hours solo no stims either with stims I, mean, I could do 700 k stims in 24 hour race really help because you don't feel tired you just keep going through just going, going through electronic shifters do you rate them yeah they're good I like DI2, I've got a few DI2 bikes, I've got three DI2 bikes, and it's good stuff. But if you have a crash, it's going to cost a lot of money, you know, so it's, it's, uh, yeah, depends what you like, you know, depends what sort of riding you're doing. Um, which is more effective way of training, long distance rowing, or training in hard zones while sustained hard paced? It depends what your goal is, Annie, I mean, depends what your goal is. Um, I would say focus on doing long distance to start with and then start adding in you know, intensity. Read my book, During Riders Lean Body Bible. Talk about it all in there. Talk about it all in there. But I wouldn't do uh, too much intensity in your first year. Just do more miles, just do more adventure stuff. And then you can do more intensity after that. You know, build, build your, your leg strength, your sort of cycling leg strength. It's not pure leg strength, but it's just like cycling condition. And then eventually you'll get used to more like, you know, higher intensity stuff. Um, hard zones if you're fat no if you're fat and doing it in high intensity man you're going to burn yourself out because your body's your liver and your kidneys aren't you, aren't used to processing that much metabolic waste and you just burn out you just burn out you know just burn out um, Ed Pratt on YouTube doing that land, unicycle that's pretty amazing he's right across the trail on unicycle that'd be tough on the old gooch man like that's, that's full on man that's, that's uh, it'd be interesting to interview him about that <sighs> There aren't a lot of climbs where I live in Kansas City, Missouri. I've been repeating the short hills we do have. Any tips on getting tough workouts in my area? It would just be like trying to get, get fast on that, that, those little hills, you know? Or move to California, move to Utah, move to SLC, or move to Boulder. Just move to where the hills are. If you're in Missouri, you're obviously not scared of the cold. So I would, I would go to, uh, you know, to where there's some mountains and go from there. Does fruit fill you up? Eat 30 bananas in a meal and let me know. How to build lead muscle? St just heavy squats, bro. Just put on as much squat as your knees can handle and just squat it every fucking day. And don't ride a bike. Don't ride a bike if you wanna get big legs. You know, just squat in the gym, man. Squat every fucking twice a day until your knee cartilage pops. So, you know. Um, why, why am I getting leg cramps after cycling? Cause you're not drinking enough water. You're just not drinking enough water. Drink enough water so you piss and clear, and you'll be fine. It's dehydrating. And then your electrolyte levels will be out of whack and you'll get cramped. So just drink more water. Just until you're pissing clear every two to three hours. You don't need magnesium tablets or whatever. Drink the water. All right, one more question. I'm gonna wrap this bad boy up. Do I recommend gels? We've just been having sugar. We buy like a kilo sugar a day, or half a kilo a day, and just put it in our bottles. And that's, you know, a kilo bag of, a kilo bag of sugar is it would cost about a dollar to two dollars. And that's about 30 gels in there. In Australia, gels cost three dollars each. So that's $90 versus one dollar. <laughs> you know what I mean? There you go. Why do haters still hate Trek as a Lance? Um, <laughs> this is a, this is the Do Not A Homeless look. Um, Kenny, smash that sugar, bro. 100 grams per hour. 100 grams per hour. Why do haters still hate Trek? Because Lance, because I guess because they were dumb enough to think that you could win the Tour de France clean. That you could win any Olympic gold medal clean. That you could win Wimbledon clean. That you could win the FIFA World Cup clean. There's dummies out there who think there's actually natural athletes at the top. There's too much financial pressure to win. If you don't dope, you won't cope. It's just business as usual. Business as usual. All right, I'm gonna go hit the road, get some carbs, and um, we'll see you guys soon. Why are Cliff Blocks so expensive? Because they're tasty, because suckers buy them. <laughs> I mean, I buy them when I'm in the US, but in Australia, like five, six bucks, I'm like, wow. 
the tasty of it, you know, six bucks for. And I, I can't. Even, man, I've, I've eaten a box of Cliff Blocks in a fucking day, you know. So, if they were cheaper, I'd probably buy them a lot more. But uh, I don't know. People just want to buy stuff if it's expensive. If stuff's too cheap, people don't value it. People don't value it, man. It's crazy. Thirty-two on a short cage depends what model of short cage it is. If it's a fifty-eight hundred, yeah. If it's sixty-eight hundred, yeah. If it's a nine thousand, yeah, it'll work. If it's an eight thousand, yeah. If it's a nine one thousand, yes. You know, Haribo, Haribo aren't vegan. Um, Haribo got gelatin in them, so. But yeah, I mean, t- if you yeah, take away the gelatin, what's the difference between a, you know, a sports nutrition gel block and a freaking lolly? It's nothing, man. You know, but take away the gelatin. I mean, imagine if all these, imagine if Haribo took away gelatin. They'd be selling so much more product because then they tap into the vegan market. These companies, man, fuck. Why do you, why exclude customers with some shitty ingredient like um g- gelatin, man? You know how to boost testosterone? How much? How, how what? To what level? To what level, Sam? How much? Like, but like one point one nano liter per deciliter. Like, how much do you want to boost testosterone? And why? Yeah. How to, like how to boost income? Just go and collect two more cans and bottles than you did yesterday, and you've earned more than the ten cents. You boosted your income. If you earned ten cents yesterday, and today you earn twenty cents, you've doubled your income in just a day. So I could write an ebook how to how I doubled my income in one day. <laughs> I made ten cents yesterday, ten cents today. So we have to be objective. What level of testosterone do we want, and why? All right. So. You gotta, you know, you always have to be objective. You know, how to boost power? Like when? So you got power at the end of a two hundred k race. So you got power every day in a stage race. So you got power just for a ten second sprint against your mates. Like how? What? Give me some numbers. I want to increase my FTP. Okay, why? What does that mean? I'll just, I got better bragging rights. Really? FTP changes every day. The FTP might be two seventy today. It might be three ten tomorrow. If I had to do my FTP today, I'd probably be like 220. 220. Um, power over 3K race is not one by testosterone, bro. It's one by, it's one by fucking how much lactate you can handle. It's, you know, it's red blood cells. It's not testosterone. Testosterone doesn't win running races. If it did, you know, if testosterone won running races, you know, people like Sustanon Network or Sustanon Gains would be kicking my ass in running races because they got more you know, exogenous testosterone in their bodies from shooting up and stuff. But I can flog those guys in running and bike races. It's red blood cell count that matters. And weight per, weight, watts per kilo or minutes per mile. So yeah. Best training to increase FTP is just one hour time trials. One hour time trials. So you can get used to doing a FTP test. When does my race start? Race is finished, man. Race is finished. So yeah. Vicar, get out there. Go and enjoy your 100k ride. 2,000 meters elevation. That sounds legit. That sounds legit. Bless part milk for coffee. Just have water and sugar and skip the coffee. All right. Anyway, I'm going to hit the road. Get some uh, snacks, massage, blood bag, and uh, got to go doping control and pay him a $1,000 bribe so I can pass it. Thanks for your questions. We'll see you next one. As always, cab the fuck up.